if they come again, mm -hmm. can't you sit the can? Try to get a move on. Mm -hmm. We we know what all of our life. Can't you sit you can? What is your name, please? My name is Kathy Sharon, and I entered a contest. My name is Kathy Sharon, and I won the contest. My name is Kathy Sharon, and I had, one of my prizes was a date in London with five of the cutest boys you've ever seen. Only one of these young ladies is the real Kathy Sharon. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this family. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by a new denture cream. The special denture toothpaste made with the cleaning power denture wearers need. Denture cream. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. And good evening, panel. Good evening, Bud. Hey, Orson. Yes. Your lovely wife, Carolyn, told me you open tonight in... in uh, in Roar the, of the Grease Paint. The Roar of the Grease Paint, the smell of the crowd. I'm replacing Anthony Newley. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very happy for you. And much success attend everything you do. Bless you, buddy. All right. Open up your envelope now and follow along as I read from this first story, if you will. I, Kathy Sharon, like most girls my age, like to enter contests. I entered one recently and then forgot about it. About a month later, I got a phone call telling me I had won. I was given a complete wardrobe by a famous designer, had my hair and makeup restyled, and was flown off for a weekend in London, England. There I was met by a group of five young men. They took me to lunch at the Savoy, they took me sightseeing, they took me to the auto races, and to some of London's top night spots. The thing that really thrilled me was that my weekend companions were not just any five young men, they were the internationally famous rock and roll group, the Dave Clark Five. Signed, Kathy Sharon. Now, these three young ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Kathy Sharon. Let's start this questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Number three, I take it you love rock and roll, do you? Yes, I do. So do I. Who is the cutest one of the Dave Clark Five? Oh, I think Dave is. Dave is? I think so. That's loyalty. Number one, do you do you have another favorite? I like Dennis. Dennis? He is a doll, isn't he? Oh, if I was a girl, Dennis could do what he wished with me. I can tell that. <laughs> Number two, when you went to uh, London, how long did you spend there? Three days. Before. Number two again, what did you do to win the contest? Number two? Oh, um, I filled out an entry blank and mailed it in to a local radio station. And that's all? You didn't say, I like the Dave Clark Park no. because... I just have right. my name and address and telephone That's all. Me. Well, you were lucky then. Number three, uh, what famous uh, group made a record, uh, a rock and roll treatment of Some Enchanted Evening? Do you know? No, I don't. Do you happen to know number one? No, I don't. Right. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, what did you have to do to win the contest? I filled out an entry bank of a cosmetic company which was running a contest. And did you have to write a jingle? No. Uh, number three, uh, who, whose wardrobe were you given? Whose wardrobe? A famous designer, you said. Who was it? Oh, it was Evan Pakal. Uh, number one, is your dress a Mondrian? No, it's a mod dress. Oh, it's a mod dress. Well, uh, number two, <laughs> do you know where the Savoy is in London? Yes, it's right in the heart of London. Thank you. Uh, number two, who did your hair styling? Um, a hairdresser from House of Avon. Number three, who wrote, uh, there's something marvelous going on downtown or something? Oh, or Perpetua Clark. Sing us a few bars, yeah. please. <laughs> In your own words. Tom Poston. Uh, number, thank you, bud. Number two, did you go alone to, uh, to Europe, to England? No, my mother came with me. Good. Yes. <laughs> your mother didn't go with you. She's also crazy about Dennis. Uh, number three, did you, did your mother go with you? Yes, she did. Which one of the boys did she like, if any? My mother. Oh, well, she. I think she liked Dave, too. Yeah? Yeah. That's really sticking to it now. now uh, number one, let me ask you uh, if you know where the Savoy Hotel is in London. It's one of the, few things, it's one of the few things I know about in, in London, so I'll ask that. Number one, what else did you do besides go to the races and sightsee and go to the Savoy for lunch? We days? were on a um, radio station. 
uh, on a, not on a TV, but we were backstage on a TV station. Ready, steady, go. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Number three, how close is the Savoy to the Thames River? Oh, it's right in back of it. Thank you. Um, number two, did they take you to Annabelle's? No. Number one, did they take you to the ad lib? Yes. They did. How did you like it? Small and dark. <laughs> <laughs> you have a nine and go, well, you've saved me the price of that one. Uh, number, number three, would you finish this, what I'm just going to say? Sam the Sham and the... Barrows. Hi! Now, <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, why, I, I think they should run a contest for English girls and they could come here and meet Jay and the, what, two? Americans. That's, oh, my, she's a hippie. Uh, <laughs> That's all we have time for. Hippie or not, it's time for you to mark your ballot. So mark them as hippily as you can. Mark them without change, of course, and without any consultation. Just vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? <coughs> well, I voted for number two, bud. The girls are certainly adorable. I thought number two could win almost any kind of a contest. It's a shame it had to be just a write-in with your name. <laughs> Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three because, I mean, she's so knowledgeable about fine music. <laughs> <laughs> That is or, fine music. Or some beans. Oh, like Number three knew everything. She knew my buddies, uh, Jay and the Americans, and Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. I meant to ask about Soupy and the Mouse, but uh, I voted for number one because uh, <laughs> she knew that that little place was small and dark, and most places are. <laughs> my apartment, I could tell you stories. Kitty Carlisle, what is your choice? I voted for number one. Uh, they all answered everything marvelously, better than God, goodness knows I could. But I thought number one knew that the Savoy was on the Strand, so I voted for number one. All right, that splits it up, high, wide, and handsome. So, let's find out now, which one of these three lovely young ladies, in truth, is Kathy Sharon? So, will the real Kathy Sharon please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, did you really have as good a time oh, as it yeah. sounds? It was marvelous. It really was. Yeah. One you'll never forget, Which huh? one is the cutest number two? I like Dave, but they're all cute. <laughs> oh, yes, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I think uh, just for the fun of it, uh, to prove that she had as good a time as she says she did, we have a picture here. Take a look. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's Kathy with a Dave Clark bar. <laughs> I can't tell from the picture, Kathy. Are there bangs as long as yours? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Kit Gerald and I'm a senior at Hunter College High School. Thank you. And pretty number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Linda Schlichting and I go to Paul D. Schreiber High School and I am also employed at ShopRite Supermarkets in Greenville. Oh. <laughs> well, we checked the score to find out that you started off very well tonight with a near complete victory against the panel. There were three incorrect votes that you duped them into passing and that three times $250 you can add it. It's $750 you get to divide. Thank you very much. I hope your visit here was as happy as the one that you had over in England. Goodbye and God bless you. Well, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Prince Hira Singh. My name is Prince Hira Singh. My name is Prince Hira Singh. Follow along again with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Prince Ira Singh of Bariya, am a hunting guide. I take visitors to my native India on shikar with gun or camera to shoot tiger, panther, black buck, bear, and bison. My charge for a shikar includes an airport reception, private cars, hotel reservations, all government licenses and royalties, board, lodging, and laundry at the hunting camp. I also provide beaters, trackers, coolies, and field treatment of any trophies to be taken home. The rates run from $700 per person for a four-day deer and small game hunt to a full-scale 15-day hunt
for Indian buffalo at a per person charge of $3,117.30. Signed, Prince Ira Singh. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be Prince Ira Singh. We'll start the cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Uh, thank you, but uh, Prince Ira Singh, uh, uh, number two. I can understand the $3,117, but why 30 cents? I mean, it's just a little chintzy. It's just that we'd like to be very exact in our quotations. It amounts to 15,000 rupees in yeah. Indian money. Oh, I see. That's uh, the regular exchange. That's right. uh, number uh, three. When you give the airport reception, in which city is the airport? Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi. Oh, you mean you move around. <laughs> I see. Well, number two, uh, number one, where is Baria? Between Delhi and Indore. Oh, Indore. Thank you. Number, uh, well, I don't see what's the mess. My dear, number two, where is Malabar? Hmm. <laughs> it's in the southern part of India. Thank you. And number three, uh, the pa the pa there uh, is a sect called the Parsis. Where do they mostly live in India? Parsis? Bombay. Thank you. Parson B. Uh, Prince, uh, uh, here I sing number one. There is a famous poet in India who bears your last name. Do you know his first name? Which one, Singh? Yeah, do you agree with that, number three? I don't know. Number two, do you know of this poet? I don't know him. Uh, number two, again, uh, uh, how many tigers have you been responsible for the bagging of? I beg your pardon? How many tigers have you been responsible for, for shooting? Quite a few. Uh, is there a real problem, number two, about tigers killing people in India? Not really. Occasionally, we do find some problems. I it. see. Number three, is there a limit on the amount of tigers that can be killed in India? Yes, one. I mean, one per person, but I mean, is there a, is there a season, too? Oh, yes, season. Well, number one, when is the tiger hunting season? Anywhere from November to mid-May. Do you agree, number one, that there isn't a general problem about... Pe I, I heard that tigers are killing people right and left in India. No, I don't think so. No. Unless it's a man-eater tiger. Oh, those <coughs> are the worst kind. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number two, what is a shikar? A shikar is a hunt. Uh, number three, what is a howdah? It's a, it's a seat on, the, um, on an elephant. Thank you. Number one, do you uh, ride on elephants in this tour of yours, too? Sometimes. Uh, number two, when you're bagging a panther, do you dig a pit for him, or how do you do this? Well, we go out and look for the panther and hunt him. Oh, but you don't dig a pit? Not when generally. You fall into. Not generally. It depends. You can do that, too. Uh, number three, um, when you go on these, on these uh, shikars, with, how many people do you take at one clip? Number three. You mean how many hunters? How many hunters? Oh, maybe two to four. Number one, how much is a government license for hunting? Well, about 300 rupees. Per person? Per person. Which is how much? Which is about, I should say, $80. And 30 cents? No, 30 cents. How do you John Paulson. Thank you, Bud. Uh, I'd like, uh, if I may, I'd like to ask number three what that stick is that the elephant trainer uses to guide an elephant back and forth. What is that thing called that they use? It's called an ankush. It's a ankush. Ankush. It is a, it is a carved um, spear, short spear. Thank you. Uh, number two, when you ride elephants, as I presume you do, number one sometimes does, do you sometimes ride elephants? Occasionally. Have any of the, your game, has any of the game you're tracking ever attacked the elephant? Yes. Uh, number one, what is the most dangerous game that you have occasion to hunt? A tiger. Let's see, number three. That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them at once and well, and rightly, of course without consulting with each other and without changing your vote once you have marked it. Just vote for number one, number two, or number three. I can't. You'll have to. I <laughs> Just force yourself. Oh, murder. Mark it up, Peg. Mm. All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? I, I voted for number three. I must say they all look like uh, royal royalty, but number three had a certain bearing, and uh, I, I believe that I would trust him on a hunt. He would know what to do. Peggy Cat. 
Well, they all look wonderful to me. But I voted for number three because, after all, he knew that the Ankush was a little carved spear, as don't we all. <laughs> Horse and bee. I picked up a handy six-pack of Ankushes just the other day. <laughs> uh, number three knew everything, I assume. Like Kitty asked him what a howdah was, and he said it's a seat on an elephant. Sounds right to me. And number two has a, has a, a look of, you know, he's handsome and he's got flashing eyes. But number three has a kind of a, uh, a royal bearing about him. He looks like a prince. Number three the has the voice. Number one, number one. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I see. I'm still fighting about the tiger. Man. <laughs> They're opening tonight. We forgive you. Kitty. <laughs> I voted for number two. They were all extraordinarily well informed. I thought number two had the kind of um, flashing smile that would be good with the people that he had to take out, and he would reassure them when the tigers came. <laughs> Very well, again, we have the votes all in, and the minds, as you heard, pretty solidly made up. Let's find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Prince Ira Singh. Will the real Prince Ira Singh of Baria please stand up? Uh <laughs> Great pleasure to have you with us. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? Well, I'm, um, my real name is Ismail Merchant and I'm a film producer and my film Shakespeare Wala was shown at the New York Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, you are the flashing smile. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is James Rutnam. I'm a correspondent for the Today Show. <laughs> Checking the score, we find you two did quite well. There were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500. And gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. We enjoyed your visit. Good night and God bless you. <laughs>my name is Esther Cooper Smith. My name is Esther Cooper Smith. My name is Esther Cooper Smith. Follow along once again, if you will, panel. I, Esther Cooper Smith, am a housewife and mother living in Washington, D.C. My hobby is giving parties which are attended by people of national and international prominence in the capital's political scene. I try to make my parties unique. At my party for the senator from Wisconsin, a six-foot statue of a cow was moved into my living room. At my party for the senator from Wyoming, I served 680 pounds of buffalo meat. And for the gumbo party I gave for a southern senator, the guest of honor cooked the whole meal. I organized a food for peace dinner at which the guests included dignitaries from 119 different countries. The highlight of my party giving career, however, was a series of nationwide LBJ barbecues attended by the president's daughters and more than 30,000 other people. Signed, Esther Coopersmith. Very well. These three young ladies all claim to be Esther Coopersmith. Let's find out something about it by starting with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you. Uh, number three, I love to give parties, but um, how do you manage to give such enormous parties? Are you frightfully rich, or is it... Is it uh, I, I know it sounds personal, but or is there some organization that you're attached to? Well, by and large, the parties that I give are for charity or for fundraising purposes of sorts. Thank you. Number two, where did you get the buffalo meat? Wyoming. Oh, and how did buffalo. they send it? It was sent, actually, <laughs> air freight, and was sent to my home. Thank you. Uh, number one, who is the senator from Wisconsin? William Proxmeyer. Uh, number three, when you give these large parties, where do you find the guest lists? The guest lists come from various sources, but usually uh, there is a general roster that's available for these. One accumulates it, let's say. Thank you. Number two, when you cook the gumbo, how long did it take? Tom Poston, how long did it take? <laughs> I don't know. I'll ask the, your host, uh, your guest of honor cooked it. How long did he take to cook it? Number two. Actually, he pre-cooked this, and then we staged this cooking at the four parties. This was a round-robin group of parties. Oh, I see. Well, thank you. Number one, did you have uh, 119 people in your own home, your, your very own personal home? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, where were these 119 people? This is at a hotel. 
Oh, oh, I see. I, well, when you, number three, when you had a cow in your living room, how many people were guests at that particular function? I had 500 at that one. In your home? Yeah. Great, merciful heaven. <laughs> <laughs> They're either tiny, tiny little people or you have a big, big home. <laughs> and, Thank you, Chad. <laughs> and number two, how big is your dining room? My dining room is rather small. Oh. I see. Uh, number three, you know this cow that chatted in the center of Wisconsin and what a lovely party favorite was? Uh, what was it sculpted out of? Actually, it's a, a plaster of Paris fabric that it's made oh. of, and then it has its own dress. Oh, I thought she made it, its dress? Surely. Yeah. You mean it has a, a dress within a cow? Oh, of course. It's a girl cow. You know, cows are girls. <laughs> Uh, number one, I've got to find this out. What does Mr. Cooper Smith do? Wash dishes? <laughs> what does Mr. Cooper Smith do? My husband's in the real estate business. Oh. Orson Bean. Number two, does Mr. Cooper Smith object to your hobby? Ever? I mean... No. My husband's very busy on his, in his own business. Oh, so this just helps while away the long hours. I <laughs> number, uh... Three, uh, do, uh, do people, when you have 500 people in your house, did you have 500 people in your house? Yes, I did. And do you find a lot of cigarette burns on the rugs and that stuff? Well, when we say it was held at my home, we might also add that a portion of it was outdoors. Oh, out in the back? Then? Yes. How many bathrooms do you have, number three? <laughs> three. Three? <laughs> well, you need them in 500 people. should be a line, all right. Number one. Number one, tell me about the buffalo meat here. Did you have buffalo steak or ragu of buffalo or roast loin of spring buffalo or what? Barbecue buffalo. Barbecue buffalo. That's it. Time for you now and not too soon. <laughs> Time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them immediately, if you will, please, without change, without consultation, as usual. Mark them swiftly for the one you think is the real one. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. For all ballots marked. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one, and I feel terribly sorry for her with all those people coming in and out and tramping. I'd like to talk to her about what wax she uses on her floor, how she cleans up her floor. <laughs> Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three because she just seemed so cool, as though she could handle thousands of people in her house, in her teeny weeny dining room. <laughs> Arson me. They're all very good, but I bet a cookie it's number one because she looks like... One of those Washington ladies to me. She has that look about her. Washington women have a certain look. Did you ever read Advice and Consent? All those ladies. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two because I thought Senator McCarthy was the senator from Wisconsin. No, it's Proxmire. Huh? McCarthy? Yeah, well, well, well he's McCarthy. the junior senator William, from wherever he's from. Well, I got all mixed up, and anyway, Eugene. I thought. Eugene, Eugene McCarthy. Thank Eugene you very McCarthy. much. I thought he was, he, but uh, I also thought that number two was competent enough and charming enough to handle all these people. Would you care to repeat your reasons? <laughs> <laughs> so far, I haven't been able to make head or tail of it. But that's the charm of the reasons, and the votes are all in at last. And we'll find out now which one of these three ladies, in truth, is Esther Cooper Smith. Will the real Esther Cooper Smith please stand up? It is. <laughs> You're innocent, you never know where it's going to lead. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Bonnie Bolding, and I'm a stockbroker with Shearson Hamill and Company Incorporated. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Kathy Bobby, and I do a comedy skit on the subject of personality for conventions and industry. This time we find the same as the last round. There were two incorrect votes, and that's twice $250 or $500. What three ladies can do with $500 is legion, I'm sure. Thank you for being with us, and hope you feel the same way. Good night, and God bless you. Time for tonight. Next week, incidentally, we're going to have a rather unusual team of challenges, so be sure to be with us. Good night, panel. Good night. Good night, Good night to all of you. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon, of course, on our daytime show, but in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Night.
who tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you by new Denture Cream, a special denture toothpaste made with the cleaning power denture wearers need. Denture Cream. Johnny Olson speaking. For To Tell the Truth, the program was pre-recorded.